I know I've been on a Divorce Diaries rant for quite a while now, but I just want to take a break to just remind you about this podcast and how I record it. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast everywhere. Seriously. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor.fm to get started or download the Anchor app. You are now listening to the Divorce Diaries podcast with your host, well, that's a secret. No names, ages, or any other identifying characteristics will be used as we protect the young and innocent. You'll be taken on a journey as one man considers getting a divorce or remaining married. The Divorce Diaries daily entries chronicle the decision-making processes in real time as they unfold day by day. He hopes to add a bit of clarity to his sometimes muddled mess of a marriage. Cheating, overspending, sex, sadness and betrayal are the characteristics of this marriage. Is he making the right choice? Welcome to The Divorce Diaries. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else. At Divorce Diary Podcast Patreon page. Link below in description. Now for today's episode. Welcome to the Rebooted Divorce Diaries Podcast. I don't know how much this is really a diary entry as much as it is a perspective diary entry on just how I think about something. I've noticed that some people, and obviously this is called the Divorce Diaries, this has to do with me, I'm probably pulling a lot of my perspective from my own experience which can be a good thing. It also can be a bad thing because your perspectives can be jaded and mine could be. So that's my full disclosure disclaimer at the beginning of this. I found that most, it seems like most moms are single moms, even if they are married. I was putting together a bed for my little one, um, my wife and I are no longer living together and we're just kind of um, going down the, the first stages of divorce. So we're, we're, we're not cohabitating and my daughter needed a, another bed and she got it. And as I'm putting it together, um, it had these cool little storage things underneath where you would push the, push the drawers in to the storage, uh, to push the doors in under the bed. So you could, you know, save money on a dresser if you just have the under bed storage. So the bed was clearly built in a way that these pegs on a few of the bottom slats of the bed would extend to the floor, providing a drawer stop for those drawers I just told you about. Push them in, boom, it would hit the back of those. Because otherwise, once you push it in, If there wasn't anything behind those drawers to stop it, the drawer would just push fully under the bed and you may have to get down on your hands and knees to try to fish it out. Um, There wasn't a lot of room for your fingertips to move in there. So it it may be a little detrimental to your finger health if the and the aesthetic of the bed, these things just keep going under. They're going under sort of unevenly. And um, but it did protrude a little bit past the bed frame where someone could possibly, you know, stub their toe or kick it or fall on it or something like that. So it it did stick out a little bit thanks to those stoppers. Now, because the stoppers were sort of unevenly placed, not directly in the middle of the plank at the bottom of the bed to support the mattress, they were at the back third. So if you flipped the plank around, it would be back much farther and the drawer would slide all the way under the bed or if you flip it around what in what appeared to be the configuration they wanted you to build it in that would make that little peg become the stopper at the back of the drawer to stop the drawer from sliding all the way to the back but you would have that you would run more of a risk of that drawer protruding to stub your toe or hurt yourself 
My daughter says, you know, I want it this way where there's a stopper so I don't push the drawer all the way into the bed. And my wife, for safety reasons, wanted it the other way so that the drawer could be pushed back farther, avoiding the stubbed toe accident scenario or possibility, which was fine. Now, this isn't the, an egregious example, but I said, yeah, I think we should build it this way. But at the same time, we're not living together anymore. So really, it's, you know, from past experience, whatever my wife says she wants, I'm just like, okay, fine. I don't even fight anymore at this point. Um, and I don't want to say fight like we're, we're fighting, fighting, fighting. I don't even want to argue my point or position. I don't even want to give evidence for why. I think this might be the better move. I just move on. I just let it go and I just move on. That's all I do. And as I'm screwing the slats in, in the way, in the configuration my wife didn't want, she's like, no, I don't like that. Flip it. I'm like, okay. She did get mad, even though I did it exactly. I, I did it and didn't put up a fight. I think we're at that place where it's just whatever. There will be a fight. Um, or, or, or there will be an attempt at a fight from her. And it is just up to me. It's incumbent upon me to fight with her or not fight her. So I just don't. It doesn't seem to quell her thirst for wanting to start a fight. But and I'm sure no one thinks that they're starting a fight. No one thinks that they're actually nitpicking. It's like, no, I just asked you. No, you asked me eight times. Well, I don't feel that I answered. Well, I did answer the first time with this answer. But that wasn't a good enough answer for me. Okay. So did you, you wanted a more elaborative answer? You could have asked that, but you keep asking the same question, which solicited the same response. You could ask it a different way. You could ask it with more detail. You could say, hey, but what I'm really looking for is this. But instead, asking the same question the same way at various times of the day, when it's answered the same way, that would be nitpicking or nagging, potentially. So, back to the scenario or the situation that happened. There wasn't a, and I understand, this is a, this is a A or B situation. It is a binary one or zero situation. My wife wanted it one way, and there, there is no compromise to be had. It's either going to be where the drawers can go all the way in, or the drawers stop and extend a bit. So, but there was just the spirit of the way that that discussion went. There was a unilateral decision by my wife. It will be this way. It will be. And... I thought about that and I thought about marriage and I thought about a lot of the different issues we may have had over the years. And I'm sure I've had my own my way or the highway um, situations where I have been the person that has not been flexible. And yes, if I were to succumb to my narcissism right now, well, those situations, I'm pretty sure... I know that I evaluated all the factors and my way or the highway was still the best way. That's not how I feel. But I know that I've definitely felt like that in the past. So I'm trying to think of and remember situations where I'm sure that there were some. But a lot of the time... Um, it's because now that we're separated, my wife's buying um, concert tickets for my daughters and there are various places around the country and she's moving and a shaking. And um, I, I, the other day I asked her like, Hey, um, are you no, now going, are you going to tell me about what's happening with our minor children when you're taking them to different places? And maybe that's a part of divorce. And actually what I'll say is maybe that's why we're getting a divorce because now it, it doesn't matter. You, my wife didn't really tell me or communicate with me a great many things when we were a cohabitating married couple. So now that we are no longer cohabitating on the road to divorce, now there's even more 
validation that my wife can move without having any conversations about things that I also have an interest in. Sometimes it would be our, as a married couple's finances or our children, what activities they might get in, where they may go, like, is everyone going to be home for dinner? Weird, random things. It, it doesn't matter. But my constant outgoing calls to my wife, hey, this is going on. I just want to let you know. What do you think? Do you want to meet us there? How do you want to do it? Do you want me to come back and get you? Double, double cars. Team, 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 team. And I, I'll admit, I was definitely fire hosing her with a few things. But um, my spirit was always one of teamwork and togetherness. And what I've noticed is even though my wife and I did get married, I feel as if she, and I know my mom did this as well, were moving still as if they were single moms. And not the sense of doing anything sort of reckless with children or anything like that. It's just, I could understand you not communicating beforehand, taking a child out of state or out of the country or whatever. And my wife hasn't, hasn't done this. In fact, with, with the out of state thing, she had a very good reason. She's like, well, you were doing something at the time and I was kind of going to tell you how it all unfolded. And, um, I didn't intend on buying tickets for my out of state concert. It just sort of happened that way. And I decided to lean in and go with it. Um, it, it was a great excuse and a great reason. And I don't begrudge her of that. I don't even have a, a problem with it. And in fact, when she told me the story, it was, it was great. And I'm like, oh yeah, well, you know, We've been on this kind of, um, not, not carpe diem, is that that you only live once or something? Um, carpe diem, like live, live life to the fullest, enjoy it as best you can. Um, yeah, that's what we sort of been adopting. And it was a great thing. And her and my daughter will have a great time at this concert, I'm sure. Great time on the plane. It's sort of fly by the seat of your pants, quite literally fly by the seat of your pants. So they're going to have a really good time doing this. And um, it sucks that it's a memory I'm not going to be able to make with them because of these realities of my wife and I no longer being a couple. So we're, no, we're definitely not going to have any conversations. Thank you, sir. We're definitely not going to have any conversations moving forward. We don't, we, I used to be checking in and having lots of conversations and trying to make sure, you know, things are sort of quote unquote cleared with my wife and making sure I'm not making any bad calls or whatever. But now that we are where we are and I've accepted reality on reality's terms more so, I know now that I am definitely not, uh, my wife is no longer front of mine. And I definitely know that she's having a little bit of a tough time with this. She's been saying like, things are weird with us. And like I said, things are, things might be weird, um, for her and things are, things are weird for me, but weird in the sense that, man, this is like, this is uncharted territory. It's, man, it's weird being in uncharted territory, but I know this is what I have to do because I used to look at my wife as a person that was not purposefully trying to deceive me. But then when I'd learn she was talking like to my kids about me behind my back and talking about other kids to other kids behind their back and just just really no boundaries and no protection for anyone that tells her anything. Now, now that I have pivoted and I how I move around her now is I treat her like a person that I don't trust. I treat her like a person that has betrayed me multiple times and will likely do it again. So for her, I was moving around her kind of knowing. And I kind of said like, Hey, will you stop talking about me behind my back? Like you're not giving me the opportunity to even say my side of the story when you do that or whatever, not creating these boundaries, but I still moved around her. I still, went out to dinners and had a good time and hugged her and wanted to embrace and wanted to talk about the day's events and share. And even after we were um, 
you know, living apart and divorcing. But as I've, through therapy, understood my trauma events more, the mental and emotional abuse, my good and bad reactions to some different events and abuses, I'm now like, oh, since this is who you are, this is how I act around people that do that. It's not like I'm planning it. It's not like I'm saying, oh, I've got to talk to my wife uh, about, um, oh, i gotta, I got to not talk to my wife. I've got to sort of uh, make her feel alienated now. I better, um, you know, make her feel alienated. How can I do that? I'm not thinking that. I'm just thinking about who I'm in the company with. And I do not see her as the loving, protecting partner. I don't see her as that. So since I don't see her as a loving, protecting partner, and I see her as a quote unquote liar, omitter, backstabber, underminer with her words and sometimes her actions, yeah, I just sort of move that way now. And I'm pretty sure for her, that's weird. It's weird. Like, how could you, how are you not talking to me? Like, why aren't you giving me like a hug? Why aren't you embracing me? And I'm like, mm, it's, um, yeah, this might be weird for you, but it's, it's, this is because of your behavior and the things that you've done and may decide to continue to do. Because with this betrayal thing, just with the talking behind my back to my kids, I will need or require, I guess, and she doesn't have to do anything like this at all, but I now require my wife to say she's sorry repeatedly she's gotta like capitulate to that like i'm sorry i did i talked to your kids behind your back and right wrong or indifferent i'm pretty sure that negatively affected you guys's relationship or i'm pretty sure it affected it i should not be saying things that will affect your relationship it's because I'm not allowing you to form your own relationship with your children. And I'm sorry for talking to the children about break a breakup that we had in high school before any of them were born. They shouldn't have known about that. And, you know, regardless of if I feel that you behaved badly or not, I shouldn't have talked to our children about our relationship and I shouldn't have talked to our children about the things that I felt you did bad or wrong. Maybe then I might be open to considering not getting a divorce, but that's what my wife does. And that's, that's one of the major things that I've had to react to over the years from my wife. And that just really poisoned my relationship. It really made me react even worse to her. Like, there have been times where I, I have been overtly, outright disrespectful toward my wife because I'm so upset at her. And I, so much tension built up, so much resentment. And that doesn't even count the times that I may have been misguided and I had a fucked up perspective. I'm just talking, just reacting to some of the things that she's done that has affected me and how she said in response from time to time, I only did it because... It was like the most gaslighty thing ever when you know that the other person, like you're, hey, come on, that was wrong. Like, don't, let's just at least just say like that was wrong. Well, no, I'm not going to say it was wrong because it wasn't. It's like, what? <laughs> boom, and then explosion. Then boom, I get so mad. Boom, I'm off the deep end. You have to understand, I think, um, to wrap this up, if the person that you are married to is still going to be a single parent in the event that you guys divorce? Will the father start to just take things 
and just start doing whatever he wants with the kids. I mean, was he always that way or is the mom just going to, has she always been the person that it, it was definitely either her way or the highway? You can't remember the last time she conceded a point. The last time she had a thorough discussion with you to try to get to some solution or is it always decisions are made in a bubble or in a vacuum? If that's the case, that's, that's really hard. That is really, really hard. And it seems like to me, I remember when my father was like the last to know of things that my mom was doing, like, where are you guys? Oh, we're here. I'm supposed to pick you up at this time or whatever. Oh, mom forgot to say it. And now I'm just having a good time where I am. And now dad's calling to remind us that, oh, yeah, right. You guys are divorced. Right. This is your fucking Thursday. Now you guys, because you couldn't work it out, you want to ruin my fucking fun on Thursday. But I'm a kid. How am I supposed to like look at it from my father's point of view and say, oh, yeah. This is how my dad might have looked at this. This is how we might have been looking at that. I don't know. Fucked up situation. And going through this divorce and watching all the other divorces that I have watched, experienced those. This is why we all should be more shrewd in who we decide to marry. And we should try our damnedest not to get divorces because it is the worst on everyone. It exemplifies lots of problems. You either, you married the wrong person. So you were in a relationship that you shouldn't have been in for too long, which means two people's lives were negatively impacted because of this union. Then children were brought into this world and their lives were negatively impacted because of this union. And now the disillusion of the union. Divorce is not a good thing because it either means it should have happened, which is really not good, or it means your marriage shouldn't have happened, which is also not good. And yes, people could grow into or out of love and all of those things, but divorce is not a good thing and no one is planning to get a divorce when they get married. So I know it's unavoidable. I know divorces will happen and continue to happen and should happen for some, but I am hurt that I feel I need to divorce. I'm sad that my children have to go through this. I'm sad that I will not grow old with my wife and have children, grandchildren, and maybe even great grandchildren coming over to our home, our home, swinging on, sitting on grandpa's lap and having a good time with grandma's cookies. My wife makes a hell of a lasagna, meatloaf, apple pies, sweet potatoes, spinach artichoke dip. The likelihood of me having it again is slim. The likelihood of me being on the grill while she's maybe making stuff inside for our grandkids is slim. fact that I'm recording this fucking podcast sucks divorce is not good for anyone wow that was the divorce diaries podcast the daily saga will continue tomorrow the full seasons episodes are on patreon now subscribe for early access click the patreon link in the description Hopefully, these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.